In this video, I'll be giving a set of financial statements for a company that I know nothing about aside from this financial information. And I'm gonna to attempt to tell the story of the business, what type of industry it's in, whether it's a mature or a startup business, whether it's a healthy company from a balance sheet standpoint. And I'm gonna do it all using KPIs or financial metrics that you can perform in a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and dive right in. In this exercise, we're given the income statement and the balance sheet for ABC Enterprise LLC, which is the only thing we know about the company is its name, ABC Enterprise, which doesn't tell us much about the type of business this is. We have the income statement for three years in a row, and we have the balance sheet as of the ending date at the third year. Our mission, should we decide to accept it, is to determine the type of industry this company is in, to determine whether it's a startup or a mature business, and to decide whether it's a healthy company from a balance sheet standpoint. One of the quickest way of determining the industry this company is in is by looking at its gross margin. We'll calculate gross margin by taking gross profit and dividing it by revenue. So we'll say equal to gross profit divided by sales. 75% for 2021, a year after that 76% and then 72%. So now we have an idea what gross margin we are looking at here. Now, gross margin will vary from industry to another. If you look at a website like cfohop.com, which collected gross margin data from a variety of companies, you'll find that the software businesses are at the higher end of the gross margin between 60 and 90% gross margin. And then services is at the lower end, 30% gross margin services is like law firms, maybe professional services companies, right? Like big four at 30% margin. And then in between you'll find manufacturing, which is a big range. Manufacturing is 10 to 50% gross margin. So given that the gross margin here is 75%, it's likely that this is a software company. The only other industry with such high gross margin is gonna be hedge funds, which if you've seen the show Billions, you'll know that it's an extremely lucrative industry. Uh, so it's either a hedge fund or a software business. So let's keep that in mind and then go further into the analytics. The second financial metric we'll be looking at is revenue growth, which will give us an idea of where the business is at in terms of the business cycle. Is it a startup company or is it a mature business? So let's go ahead and calculate. The calculation goes by taking the revenue from the current year minus the previous year and dividing that by the base year, which is the previous year. So in 2022, the business revenue grew by 73% or nearly doubled from the year before. If we drag this formula across, we'll see that they grew by more than double in 2023. Now, this is very important because revenue growth can tell us where the business is at in the business cycle. Is it a startup company or is it a mature business, right? So a business at the beginning of its cycle or a startup business is nearly doubling its size and revenue, which makes sense, right? They're still growing, they're still grabbing market share from their competitors, right? Whereas with a mature company, think Apple or Facebook, they're nearly growing at a five to 30% per year because they've already established their presence, they've grabbed their market share, and now they're just just making new products to try to grab more market share and they're growing at a slower pace. But when you have a business that its revenue is growing at a multiple uh, doubling or tripling, that's a big telltale that this is a startup business. All right, so what do we know so far? We know that this is most likely either a software company or a hedge fund. We know it's a startup company by looking at the size or the growth of its revenue year over year. So now let's go ahead and use another KPI such as R&D percentage to revenue that will tell us another telltale sign what kind of industry this company is in. But before we continue, if you're benefiting and learning something from this video, go ahead and hit the like button because that's how it reaches more people on the platform. And if you don't know me already, my name is Bill Hanna. I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA and a controller in New York City and also the founder of the Controller Academy, which is essentially a download of all of my accounting knowledge into my accounting students. So go ahead and check that out as well. But moving on, we'll go ahead and calculate the R&D spend as a percentage of revenue. Now to calculate that, all we have to do is take the R&D line item on the income statement and divide it by its total sales. We get 25% in 2022. Uh, we get also 25% in 2023 and we get 22% in 2023. So the average here 
is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 23%. So this company is spending 23% of its sales on research and development. So let's step back, think about and see what that is telling us. The amount of money a company is spending in its research and development will also vary by industry. So the percentage here is gonna give us a good sign what type of industry this in. If you look at a website like eInvestingForBeginners.com, which collected R&D spend as a percentage of sales from multiple industries, you'll find that software businesses spend around 19 to 20% on R&D, which is a very close percentage to revenue, like the company that we have here, which is spending on average 23% of its revenue on R&D. Uh, so this is another telltale sign that this is a software company spending around 23% of its revenue on research and development. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this Excel file in the description of this video so you can go ahead and download it and maybe reperform all of these financial metrics yourself. All right, moving on from the income statement and into the balance sheet. We have the balance sheet here as of the year end and we have current assets. Um, they have cash, accounts receivable. They have under other assets, long-term contract acquisition. So right there, you have some signs into what's going on. Uh, the first thing is that there is no inventory in this business, which is another telltale sign that this is most likely a software company because there is no inventory, right? The companies with, without inventories are usually services or software companies, right? So we're looking at here, this is a company that is most likely a software business. They also have long-term acquisition, long-term contract acquisition cost, which is the capitalization, most likely this is the capitalization of sales commission that they pay to their salesmen that work for the company. They capitalize that as per the accounting uh, standard, ASC 606, the new standard uh, for revenue recognition and the contract uh, acquisition cost for revenue uh, that you have to capitalize sales commission. This process of capitalizing sales commission and how to implement it in the accounting software is described in details in the Controller Academy. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, so by looking at this, we're saying, okay, there is no inventory, uh, most likely a software company like we said before. Um, so we go ahead and try to decide the health of the company. So the two metrics that I like to use to determine the health of the company is gonna be the current ratio, which determines whether the company has enough liquid assets in its current assets to meet its current obligations. And the second one is debt to equity ratio Ratio, which tells me how the company is financing its operations. Is it mostly financed through debt, which is not great, unless you're in an environment where the debt uh, pricing or the interest rates are very low, then companies go out and get more debt. Um, or are they financing the operations from equity? Uh, equity will come from two sources, either the investment from the investors of the company or the profits that the company is accumulating in the business in the form of retain earnings, right? So debt to equity, equity ratio is an important one because it tells you a multiple of how much uh, the company is using liabilities or debt to uh, finance its operation. So let's go into uh, current ratio. Current ratio is the uh, calculated by taking current assets and divided by its current liabilities. So we'll say equal current assets, 8 million, divided by current liabilities, which is four, uh, four X, that's four multiple um, of what we have, which is uh, pretty healthy because that tells me that the company has four times in its current assets that can be used to satisfy its current liabilities, right? So you want this number to be definitely more than one um, to tell that the company is doing well. Uh, the higher the multiple, the better, so that you know that you can meet your obligations. Uh, debt to equity, is calculated by taking total liabilities, which includes current and non-current liabilities, divided by the equity. And you get a 0 0.76, which is telling us that the company is using uh, less than one multiple um, of its equity from debt, right? So the company is financing its operation by a multiple of less than one from liabilities, right? Uh, so you want that number to be less than one typically for the company to be healthy enough that it's operating from equity more than debt. 
So to summarize, we've used financial ratios to determine the type of industry this company is in. Uh, we know based on gross margin that this is a high gross margin company and it's a software business most likely based on that gross margin number. Uh, the revenue growth that is more than doubled year over year is telling us that this is a startup company. The R&D spend as a percentage of revenue uh, is 25% or on average 23% annually, uh, which tells us that this is also a software company based on what we've seen online from eInvestingForBeginners.com. And we looked at the health check for the company on the balance sheet. We looked at its uh, current assets, or we looked at its current ratio rather, which is current assets divided by current liabilities. We know it's a healthy company from meeting its current obligations. And from a long-term standpoint, from a debt to equity ratio, we know that they're financing their operation more from equity than from debt, which is another healthy sign. So as you can see, we can tell a lot about a business without ever hearing any kind of information aside from this financial information. This is the power of accounting. If you master it, it is the language of business. Uh, and thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.